Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time tuning in, welcome. I hope I don't piss you off with my unfiltered commentary, but if I do, it is what it is, right? <laughs> the Notorious B.I.G. mom, Valletta Wallace, thinks Diddy needs a motherly pip slap. Oh, wait. Oh, whatever. After the Cassie video, and she says she'd love to be the one who delivers it. Miss Wallace has some strong words for Diddy, saying she wants to slap the daylights out of him after viewing the shocking hotel footage. I'm sick to my stomach. I'm praying for Cassie. I'm praying for his mother. I don't want to believe the things that I've, I've heard, but I've seen the hotel video. I pray that he apologizes to her. I hope that I see Sean one day, and the only thing I want to do is slap the daylights out of him, and you can quote me on that, because I liked him. I didn't want to believe all the awful things, but I'm so ashamed and embarrassed. He needs to apologize to his mother. I hope to God he sits her down and spills his guts and apologizes to her. Miss Wallace's comments were made in the magazine's recently published investigation into the disgrace media mogul's history of violence. The article included quotes from his associates, former employees of his bad boy records company, and other music industry sources who claimed that Biggie saw his former label boss, Diddy, as a corny executive. According to sources, the late rapper had been preparing to cut ties with the music label before his tragic death in 1997. Diddy founded Bad Boy Records in 1993 after he was fired from Uptown Records due to management. Diddy admired Tupac. He admired his ability to marry street credibility with mainstream appeal. He wanted to get close to Tupac. He wanted a friendship with Tupac, but Tupac was not interested. Diddy spent the whole summer of 1993 studying Tupac's hit, I Get Around, as a blueprint for a commercial hip-hop record. He was obsessed with Tupac. He was jealous of Biggie's and Tupac's friendship because they didn't like him like that. They thought he was a cornball, a corny executive. Both of them thought that. Before his death, Biggie was preparing to leave bad boy, okay? Biggie's lawyers were trying to pull back Biggie's publishing rights from Diddy. And Diddy was screaming, I will never give it up until I'm dead. And my bones are crushed into powder. That's why he was screaming at the lawyers. This guy's a monster. So he got rid of Biggie because Biggie was about to leave. And he's no rapper. He can't rap. He needed Biggie. So guess what? He got rid of Biggie. And he capitalized on the shock and sadness over Biggie's death. And you know what else? Rolling Stone approached Diddy about a cover opportunity a few months after Biggie's death. Well, the M word. Diddy's partner was telling Diddy, let's make it Biggie. You still have a chance for a cover in the future. He, Diddy's like, nope, 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 nope. He's dead. He is dead. I'm putting out. No way out in July. I need to be on the cover of Rolling Stone, son. And Diddy got his cover. And two years later, he acknowledged how Biggie's death had been big business. He says, I think his passing added to the fame. Oh, duh. Nobody was checking for you. He said, at least two million of the nearly 5 million copies of No Way Out were sold due to Biggie's death, straight up. Just like that, he got his fame that he desperately was chasing. That is sick. These people will do anything for fame. 
There are no limits to will they, what they'll do for fame and money. Okay, so that's all, you guys. Thank you. Don't forget to hit up that like button for me and smash that subscribe button for me. Thank you for the support, you guys. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.